Greetings friends, David Marks here with an updated tutorial for you on how to convert a full color image into a powerful black and white photograph using Adobe Photoshop Lightroom Classic. Nothing that we are going to do in this video is very hard, but I am going to assume throughout this tutorial that you are already familiar with how the develop module and many of its tools work inside of Lightroom Classic. If any of the features that I use today are new for you, then please watch some of my in-depth image development basics videos after you have finished this tutorial. If you are ready, then let's jump into the beautiful world of black and white photography and let's get started. There are many ways to turn a color image into a black and white using Adobe Photoshop Lightroom Classic. This is a topic though, where the simplest method is something that we are going to avoid throughout the rest of this tutorial. The method that I'm going to shun is pulling the saturation slider all the way down to negative 100. As you can see, this option gives an instant black and white, but I suggest that you ignore this technique because it rarely creates interesting results and it severely limits our further editing capabilities. A better option is to tap here on the words black and white at the right top corner of the basic panel. Tapping on this button instantly applies the Adobe Monochrome profile to your image. At first glance, our image looks very similar to what we saw a second ago, but there's a big difference. To demonstrate why this method is more flexible, I need to switch over to the black and white, the B&W mix panel. Using the eight sliders in this panel, I can make use of my image's original color data to influence the tones that my image will acquire during the black and white conversion process. If I take the blue slider, for example, and I move it to the right, then I'm telling Lightroom to remap all the pixels that were shades of blue in my original to brighter tonal values as it becomes a black and white. If I do the opposite, if I move the blue slider towards a negative value, then I'm telling the program to shift all the pixels that were this color towards a darker value. This ability to shift specific color tones towards brighter or darker shades of gray is one of the secrets that many beginner photographers miss. Two additional tips here. First, although there are eight sliders, not every image will actually contain all eight of these colors. If I move the red slider around, for example, then nothing significant seems to happen because there were almost no red pixels in my original image. Second, while there's nothing wrong with moving these sliders this way, there is an alternative that I love. Rather than dragging these sliders one by one, I prefer to tap here to enable the target adjustment tool. With the target adjustment tool active, when I hover the cursor out over the image, Lightroom will identify the correct color for me. Now, if I wanna make these pixels brighter or darker, I can click and hold down the left button on my mouse. With the left button held down, I can push the mouse towards my screen to brighten up this zone, or I can pull the mouse down and away from my monitor to make these pixels darker. If the target adjustment tool is new for you, then please check out my complete tutorial on some of the other neat things that this feature can also do for you inside of Lightroom Classic. With a little sculpting, I can make my image look like this. If you're playing along, and if you've activated the target adjustment tool, then don't forget to turn it off when you're done. To turn the target adjustment tool off, either tap on the little button that you use to activate it, or tap on the enter slash return key on your keyboard. I'm going to split my screen at this point, so you can compare the image that we have now to the version from the very beginning of this tutorial when I pulled the global saturation all the way down. The image on the left is the desaturated version, and the one on the right is the one that I just shaped using the monochrome profile and the black and white mix panel. It's really no contest. The desaturated image, it lacks tonal separation, and it would take a lot of additional work to try to make this weak conversion nearly as interesting as the one on the right. I hope that this side-by-side -side comparison makes it clear 
why starting with a profile and then doing some sculpting is the superior way to get started. Let me hop over to another example, and I'll show you some additional improvements. This time, we have an image from Redwood National Park. And unlike the last example, this photo does not have a lot of color variety. In the last example, I started our conversion by tapping on the black and white treatment button. I did this so that Lightroom would automatically apply its default Adobe Monochrome profile. That's a fine habit, but the truth is there are a whole bunch of other potentially superior black and white starting points if we dig a little deeper. To do that, I'm going to tap here to open up the profile browser. Next, I'm going to tap here on the letters B and W, since the black and white profiles are the ones that we care about for this tutorial. I find it helpful when working in black and white to click here and to change the display mode to list, since most of these profiles do not have meaningful names. At this point, I have 23 different black and white profiles that I can choose for my conversion engine. With all of these tabs open, you can see that I could choose the Adobe Monochrome profile, or I could pick from five camera matching profiles. I could also pick from 17 additional black and white profiles that Adobe has created for us. Each of these profiles will give us a different starting point, and each will increase or decrease the tones in certain parts of your image. I'm going to ignore the camera matching profile options in this tutorial, not because I dislike them, but because the choices in there will vary from file type to file type and from one camera model to another. Now, as I move the cursor up and down over this list of Adobe's black and white profiles, watch how my image changes. Some of these profiles, like number three, make the shadowy parts of the image much darker. Others, like number 10, really reduce the contrast and move all of the tones toward middle gray. There are no rights or wrongs here. Which profile you pick depends on the mood that you want to create for that particular image. The point that I want to make is that Adobe Monochrome is just one of many potential options. For today's demo, I'm going to choose the B and W green filter version 2 option. Next, I'm going to come up here and adjust the amount slider to further enhance the strength of this profile. That looks good for an initial starting point, so now I can close the profile browser. Next, I'm going to jump down to the black and white mix panel, and I'll open up the histogram as well. Because there are so few colors to work with in this image, we are not going to see big changes in the black and white mix like we saw in the last image. But I am going to slightly raise the settings for my yellow and green pixels to map those colors over to brighter values. While I'm making these changes, I'm keeping one eye on my image and the other eye up here on the histogram at the top. That this image has some pure black pixels, that doesn't really bother me. But I want to be careful not to blow out a whole bunch of my brightest highlights. And in this case, I fear that if I move the green slider too far, that's exactly what's going to happen. With protecting my highlights in mind, I'm now going to turn my attention to the exposure controls in the basic panel. Since my histogram already runs from inky black to about paper white, I'm going to leave the blacks and white sliders alone in here. But I am going to raise the shadows way up, and I'll gently increase the overall exposure. That tiny move with the exposure has pushed a few of my brightest pixels out of range. So I'm going to hold down the Alt Option key on a Mac. That's the Alt key on a PC. And I'm going to click on the Highlights slider to see if I can recover a tiny bit of fringe detail by bringing this one down. If I tap and hold the cursor over this eyeball at the top left of the Basic panel, then you can see how these moves have helped me restore some important shadow details to this image. For one more gentle exposure push, 
I'm going to open up the Tone Curve panel next. In here, I like to tap on the first icon for the parametric curve. And now I'm going to move the lights and darks controls in opposite directions to ever so slightly add a little bit more contrast into this image. It's subtle, but it's a little more contrast. OK, to see a complete before and after, I'm going to tap on the backslash key on my keyboard. We've gone from this to this, and I'm really happy. What you've just seen, carefully picking the profile for my initial starting point, refining the tones with the black and white mix panel, and then finish things off with the exposure controls. That's my favorite black and white image processing workflow. Well, there you go. I hope that this video has inspired you and that you will put these skills to use creating beautiful black and white images. If you found this tutorial helpful, then please subscribe to this channel and leave us a like or a comment down below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in our next tutorial.